This is Skill Building Workshop Series 7, and this is the first in the series. It's about best measurement practices with the Keysight 4024 scope, and that's the scope that we've got over here. In this workshop, I'm going to walk you through what I think are the most important skills you need to use the scope in order to measure voltage signals from various devices under test. The scope is one of the most important instruments that you're going to be using, and you want to become comfortable with it so that you're not constantly searching for the controls and trying to learn how to use the scope at the same time you're trying to interpret the results. And so I'm going to walk you through what are the most important methods to measure the signals, extract the useful information. Throughout this series I'm going to uh, be referring to the scope itself and so uh, and I'll be pointing to some of the features on the screen. You'll be able to see them over here. But when we want to look at a close-up of the details of the screen, really hard to see it in the, uh, this camera image. You can see the buttons and where they're located and what I'm pushing on the screen. When we want to look at the details on the screen and see the, the writing that's there and, and some of the scales, I've got the video output of the scope coming in on another channel and we'll be able to zoom in on that so you can see with great clarity uh, what is written on the scope. And then every now and then we're going to want to do some rough estimates or some calculations uh, and to do that we're literally just going to grab uh, pencil and paper and I'm going to draw for you some examples of um, how to estimate some of the parameters that we expect to see since that is such an important feature. So it's going to be a multimedia uh, workshop here. What I strongly advise is that you get all the equipment that I'm going to mention in the next video, you get that available, and you play along with me as I'm exercising the different functions. The most important skill you can gain during this workshop is the muscle memory. It is uh, understanding where all the features are so that you don't have to hunt around for them and you're comfortable where they are. That's why there is no substitute for experience and just playing around and doing it. So be sure to set up your scope and source the same way I am so that you can get the same measurements on your screen as I am. Now having said all that, there's no substitute to reading the manual. You know, generally they're kind of dry and boring, and they just tell you what each of the knobs and each of the, the buttons do. Uh, they're not, the manual is not designed to teach you the best way of using the scope. That's what we're going to cover in the workshop. But it will answer some of the underlying questions and some of the confusion about what each of the functions does and what its limitations are. So I strongly recommend, it's a good practice, always review the manual, keep it handy. If you have a specific question, you can always refer to it. But again, keep in mind that it covers what the scope does. It covers the features, does not cover the best measurement practices. And that's what we're going to focus on. In particular, as we go through all the exercises, we're always going to take every opportunity to practice these different operations. These are processes that should come second nature to you, so you should become very, very familiar with them and, and always follow these as a habit. First, of course, is rule number nine, which is don't do a measurement unless you've already anticipated what you expect to see. That comparison, first, it helps you think through what am I actually measuring and what do I expect. Second is, it helps you identify what may be a potential artifact, that is, something that is added to the measurement that is not actually there because of how we're doing the measurement. If you know what to expect, if it's not, if you measure something that is not what you expect, there's a reason for it. Could be an artifact, could be how the scope is set up. Could also be, um, you know, maybe the device under test isn't working correctly, or maybe our understanding is incorrect. Either way, if you don't see what you expect, there's a reason for it, you should always pursue it. Find out why. Second is, there are many important essential principles that we learn in electrical engineering. And while we learn them in a textbook and maybe doing some exercises, there's no substitute to understanding how they interact with the real world. How do we apply the principles to the real world? We will see this over and over again. And one of those principles, maybe the most important one, is this idea that we, we have the real world. The real world is the scope. The real world is this particular device under test, the microcontroller board. The real world are the physical things that we can measure. But to think about it, to apply our electrical engineering principles, we have to abstract that real world into our ideal world of models. And it's always valuable to gain, 
to take every opportunity to practice how do you translate the physical world into that world of models so we can use the models to help us understand what's going on and check that consistency. When we see a waveform, square wave for example, in order to extract the figures of merit, we're making some assumptions about how this square wave is similar to an ideal square wave and the figures of merit of an ideal square wave. Same thing with the device center test. We're going to convert the the uh, output voltage, the driver, into a Thevenin equivalent model. And so it's really important to gain practice at performing this abstracting, this transcending the real world into the uh, world of ideal models. Along the way, the better we understand what the scope is doing and what our device center test is doing, the better we can be on the lookout for artifacts. It's easy, as we'll see, to push a button and get a measurement like we see on the screen here. It's hard to have confidence that what we're seeing is the actual voltage at the device center test and not the addition of some artifact due to the measurement process. And I'm going to identify for you and show you a number of artifacts to watch out for, and that's all about best measurement practices. Generally, this is an incredibly powerful scope. It can do a lot of different things. Be careful when you're using one of the features of it if you don't understand what it's doing. Almost always you will get a number out, but if you don't understand what the scope is doing to get that number, again it may either introduce an artifact or be misleading. So pay attention to what the different functions are doing and think about what's going on inside that scope to translate the measurement at the, the front connector into what we see on the front screen. And again, part of rule number nine, this idea of uh, trying to gain confidence in the quality of the result that we're looking at, you can never do too many consistency tests. And so whenever we look at a measurement, we extract a few figures of merit from it, we always want to be asking, if that's true, if I, is there some other test I could do that would um, be a good consistency test with my understanding, that would check what I'm doing. And so as we go through the measurements, we'll be looking for always doing as many consistency tests as possible. Okay, so with that prelude to what we have in store, we're going to walk through the features of how to obtain good quality measurements from this scope. So let's get started.